Okay, let's start with number one then. Now that you've seen the intro, let's go from here. Write an equation with this information and graph it. And knowing that HK is the center, then what we're gonna do is basically end up with something in this same format. The X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. And what we're gonna do is fill in the H, the K, and the R, and then we'll be done. It's really not gonna be too terribly bad. So X minus negative two, so plus two, and then y minus negative one, and then r squared is nine, there we go. Now we're also gonna graph it. So let's start at negative two, negative one. We'll switch colors here. Negative two, negative one, there's our first point, there's our center. From that center, we will go three in every direction. And uh, let's go three to the left, three to the right, three up, three down, Crisscross, everybody clap your hands. Okay, never mind. Three to the left, three to the right, three to the right, three to the back. Pretty good circle, if I do say so myself. There we go. All right, the second one, the center is at four, two. All right, let's just jump straight to the answer. X minus four is the opposite, and then Y minus two, and that's squared, and that's equal to that squared. Ooh, the radius is two squared of three. So this right here that I'm just about to write, it's about to go right there. And it better be two squared of three squared. Okay, now what I just wrote is correct-ish. I left out something that's rather important. We're going to square everything here. So it's four, which because that got squared. The square root of three squared is three, so it's really four times three, and therefore we get 12. It kind of goes back to the idea that we had at the beginning, um, where if we were gonna take the square root of 12, we would break it down and into its factors, and one of them would be four, the other one would be three, and uh, it'd be square root of four times the square root of three, the square root of four is two, and, and, and it's basically working opposite from that. Just saying. Okay, let's graph that really quickly. Four, two, um, two square root of three, grab a calculator, just to get a decimal approximation. Uh, two square root of three is uh, 3.46, roughly three and a half. So three and a half to the left, three and a half to the right, three and a half up, three and a half down. That's Charlie Brown. There we go. Okay, the next one is worded much, much differently. I'm actually gonna give you just a second here, and uh, I'd like for you to read through it and see if you can figure out how to tackle it. Don't just take this moment of silence to wait for me to do it. You'll never learn problem solving skills unless you try things on your own. So I'm just gonna wait here. You read it. Now at this point you're thinking, how long is he gonna wait? I'm gonna wait till you start writing something down. <clears throat> Waiting. Okay, what do you think? What do you think we ought to do? Now, I want you to keep in mind that there are several ways to represent a math problem. You can represent it with an equation. You can represent it with a graph. And if you can't figure out how to solve it, Think of the best way to represent it. Now, what I'm about to tell you is not the gospel truth. It's the way that I personally think it's easiest to figure out. But that doesn't mean that it is the easiest way for you to figure it out. Okay? So, take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. The diameter extends from negative 3, 2, negative 3, 2, to 5, 2. I think a graphical approach is pretty good. That is your diameter. Okay, now there are ways to do it algebraically, and we'll get into that later, but for now, we know that much right there. Well, what do you know about a diameter? Right now, think of everything you know about a diameter and think of how it can be applied to solve this problem. Okay, also consider what was missing in this problem. What did they not tell you? They didn't tell you the center. 
Actually, they gave you the radius and they didn't even need to. Because if I knew the endpoints of the diameter, then I can easily figure out the center just by finding what happens in the middle. And I can also easily find the radius. So this information was a little bit superfluous. There we go, superfluous. There's you an SAT word right there. So halfway in between them must be the center. That also, by default, tells me what the radius is. So four up, four down, four left, four right. Here we go. Now I know I just marked out some information up there that actually is gonna come in handy when we write our equation. Let's, um, let's get the center of it. The center of it is at one, two. 1 comma 2 and the radius is at um, radius is 4 and again they didn't have to tell you that but they did so uh, x minus 1 squared y minus 2 squared I say they did actually I did I was the one that typed this there we go okay do you remember at the very beginning of the lesson uh, the very beginning was writing on the board and I was talking about perfect square trinomials remember remember oh oh I hope you remember because here it is take a look at number four this right here is a perfect square trinomial. Don't pretend like you hadn't seen it. You just saw it a few minutes ago. This right here is another perfect square trinomial. This is really x plus, say it with me now, 2 squared. This is really y Plus, oh, you caught me in a lie. It's minus, it's not plus. I hope you didn't start writing down plus. I did that on purpose, I promise. Seven squared, that is equal to one. Write each equation in standard form. Let's write the equation for these in standard form. So we did that. State the center and the radius, and we're gonna graph it. And we're just gonna draw a rough sketch of the graph because I didn't give you a graph on here. Um, actually, I think I probably will before I print out your copy of these. But in the meantime, let's just go with it. Uh, the center. Very quickly, negative 2, positive 7. The radius is, I'm going to write something unnecessary. So square root of 1, well, that's just 1. All right. Center is at negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's right here. The radius is going to go 1 in every direction. 1 up, down, left, and right. There we go. That is a hideous circle that missed one of the points completely, but there it is. Okay. You good? If not, pause it and ask me something. Whoa, we got a problem on number five. Well, we have a problem on number five. That was bad grammar. We got a problem. <clears throat> People think that's correct grammar. It's not. Okay, so um, here's our problem on number five. We don't have perfect square trinomials, but we've addressed this, so it's okay. This is really x squared plus 4x plus, um, well, wait, I don't know. Actually, I do know, and be real, you know what it is too, right? So we're missing something that would make this x part a perfect square trinomial. y squared minus 2y plus something equals 4. Now, what I just wrote is slightly inaccurate. Here's the problem. We're going to have to add something in this blank right here. And when we add something in that blank, we better add it to the other side as well. And likewise here. Okay, so what goes in this blank? Four. What goes in this blank? Please don't say negative one. Half of negative two is negative one. Negative one squared is positive one, even if your calculator tells you otherwise. Calculators don't know how to deal with negatives sometimes because they can't read our mind. Okay, obvious on this side. Four plus four plus one, that's a nine. Let's look ahead for just a second because I feel like it's necessary. The radius is going to be what? You said it. Boy, I hope you said it. Three. Here's the center. We don't know what it is yet, but um, there we go, center. But in the meantime, let's take this little piece right here and this little piece. These three make a perfect square trinomial. These three make a perfect square trinomial. This is exactly what we did at the beginning of this lesson, and it seemed to be completely disconnected with everything else we were doing. So x plus 2 squared and y minus one, two, three, one. There we go. I was trying to keep guessing. 
Okay, the center is at negative 2. Make sure you change the sign. Positive 1. Again, make sure you change the sign. The radius is 3, so let's draw it. Negative 2, positive 1. Let's go a few more in each direction. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And therefore, we are going to go to negative 2, positive 1, 3 in every direction. 3 left, 3 right, which crosses us over the y-axis. 3 up, 3 down, draw a circle. That is a hideous circle, but there we go. There we go. On the back side now, I'm going to move on. Pause it if you need to. Here we go. We're going fast. On the back side, we have a very similar situation, and we did a problem almost exactly like this just a second ago, but this one's for extra practice. So uh, I'm going to just very quickly work through this one. Keep in mind that we are missing something right here. We're missing a number that would make this a perfect square trinomial. We don't yet know what it is. And then likewise here, we're missing that. We have negative 10 plus something plus something. Don't know, don't know. Um, let's start filling it in. What well, goes right here? 25? Well, if I, if I added it to one side, I better add it to the other side. What well, goes here? 1? Good. Okay, on this side we have 15 plus 1, 16. Jumping ahead, radius is what? 4. Joke never gets old, does it? Yeah, I think it does. Okay, if you're into this sort of thing, you can draw these little brackets and identify that this little fella right here, these three terms, together, by combining their powers, they make a perfect square trinomial. Lucky them. X, Y, what's this one? Minus 5, what's this one? Plus 1, we've encountered that a lot, haven't we? Um, center is at 5, negative 1. going to quickly, quickly draw a circle. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, center is at 5, negative 1. Center is right there. The radius is 4. Up 4. Uh, went a little too far. There we go. 1, 4, 4, 4, 4. Kind of guesstimating. There we go. What a hideous circle. Okay, number seven. Oh my, we have a mess. We have a horrible mess. And, and, and here's the problem. Not only do I have unidentifiable and incomplete perfect square trinomials, it's terribly out of order as well. So what we need to do is rearrange. Um, Let's get our x's together. And, and let's keep in mind, too, that in the process of doing this, we're going to be missing some stuff. So here's an x. There's the linear portion of it, the quadratic part, the linear term. And then a constant that's going to make that a perfect square trinomial. And then we have a y that's squared, a 12y, and then something else. Well, the obvious question now is, what about that negative 4? What are you going to do with that? Well, we'll do what negative 4 is all to do when they're in the way should go to the other side. We're going to add it, move it to the other side, because we don't need him. He is going to mess up our process of filling in blanks that will make perfect square trinomials. Here we go. All right, I'll point. You whisper it quietly to your computer screen. What goes here? What goes here? That's a 9 and that's a 36. This makes a 49. There we go. That's a 49. I would like to think that your radius is rather obvious at this point. X minus 3. Y plus 6. At this point, I believe it's rather obvious what to do. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now I'm running out of room on this one. I am going to just slap this one down so fast. I'm just going to estimate. 7, 7, 7. Whoa, ran out of the grid. Oh, well. Wow, that was a horrible estimation. That is a severely deformed egg. Okay, so there we go. That makes us, uh, I guess, through number 7. And let's hit 8, 9, and 10 very quickly. I want you to realize that in the process of stating an equation, you need what? Well, if it's a circle, you need what? A center and a radius. 
So we need to identify for every one of these three problems, we need to identify the center and the radius. So let's go. Let's do it. All right. What's the center on number eight? Give me a coordinate. Two, two. Sounds good. Thanks. What's the length of the radius? Okay, I have given this problem in the past many times, and people, for some reason, they miscount, and here's what they do, and I know the answer, you're probably like, oh my gosh, I got it, I know the answer, but I just want you to be careful, because sometimes when you see a grid like this, we have a natural tendency to go, oh, the radius is one, two, and we count the diameter just without even thinking, so please be careful, I mean, even though I know you know the difference between a center, I mean, a radius and a diameter, just be careful that you count from the middle to the edge, one. Okay, not insulting your intelligence. Just want to warn you against some obvious mistakes. So uh, there we go. There we go. All right, let's fill it in. X minus 2, Y minus 2 is equal to 1. Number 9. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find the center, and, and so therefore it might be easy to draw a diameter. Now this one's not too difficult, but some of them do get kind of painful. Draw the diameter and find the middle of it. Boom, there it is. Okay, so what's the center in that situation? Well, the center on number 9 is uh, 0, 1. What's the radius? How far is it from the middle to any edge? 3, or 3, or 3, or 3, or, hey, let's get crazy. 3. Hmm? Yeah, kind of crazy, isn't it? That's 3. That's 3. That's three. That's three. There we go. Well, it was until my line got all crooked. But anyway, it's like these little spokes in this bicycle wheel. Wheel. They're all three. So there we go. Oops, drop my pen. X minus zero. Well, then why in the world would I even put it? First one we've encountered like this, isn't it? X minus zero squared is just X squared. Plus Y minus one squared equals 9. Again, that is 0, 1. Just want to point that out. Okay, last one. This one's a decimal. The center of this circle is right here. 1, 2, 3 and a half. This one is at negative 3 and a half, comma, and it goes up a half, so positive 1 half. What's the length of it? The radius? 1 and a half. So the radius is 1.5. Final answer. This one's not going to be bad at all. X plus 3.5. Y minus 0.5. And then 1.5 squared is 2.25. Okay. 11 and 12. Oh my goodness, what in the world are we doing? What we're going to do is write the equation of a circle. Stop. No, it's not hammer time, but I want you to stop and think about this. Before you even read the rest of it, which you might have done, you're going to write the equation of a circle. What two things do you need? You need the center and you need the radius. Now, obviously, I gave you one of those. So this right here is going to come in handy. Obvious question. What are you missing? I'm asking an obvious question because I'd like to think that these are the things that go through your mind. What are you missing? You're missing the radius. So we need to find the radius. Find the radius. Okay, well, how do you find a radius? Well, you could graph it. L but let's be realistic. If you were to graph this coordinate and that one, and find the distance somewhere along the way, we'd probably mess up. There is a more exact way. Excuse me. We are going to find the radius. Now let me ask you again. How are we going to find it? Well, let's define radius. What's the radius? In a circle, what is the radius? See, this is how we problem solve. You pick apart a problem. If you don't know how to solve it, it's not about knowing the procedure. It's about knowing the right questions to ask. So, what is a radius? The radius is the measurement from the center to any point on the circle. So, what do we need? We need a formula that will give us the distance between any two points. 
Oh my goodness, I hope something just popped in your mind and clicked when I said that. We need the distance between these two points. We need the distance formula. Let's write it in red. The distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1. You can reverse those. Not a big deal because you're about to square it. Plus y2 minus y1. Square that. For the sake of doing it correctly in the calculator, I always tell my students this. When you type the square root on the older operating systems anyway, many of them will pull up an automatic parenthesis. Close it out here. Okay? So let's keep in mind that this is x1 and this is y1. This is x2, this is y2. We can do this probably without a calculator. I think I planned it to where you could, so let's try it anyhow. Here goes. Here we go. Um, first set of parentheses. I'm changing the colors just so it'll stand out and you won't miss that parenthesis because a lot of people mess up. That's the automatic one that pops up with the square root if you're on the older operating system on the calculators. You can upgrade, but then sometimes it's not really worth it in my opinion. But anyway, negative 13 minus negative 1. There we go. There's that one. Squared plus 7 minus 2. There's that one squared. Um, let's see. We'll close out the parentheses. There's a green one. Um, you can calcular, you can cal, you can calculate it. I just about invented a word. You can use the calculator on it if you want to, but let, let's not. Uh, negative 13 plus 1 is negative 12. Negative 12 squared is 144. So we have 144 plus, um, that's 5 squared is 25. And, um, so yeah, if you're still in the calculator mood and you want to get your parentheses right, there you go. So you really have the square root of 169, and that makes it 13. That makes what 13? Wait, don't, don't lose sight of what we're trying to find. We were finding the distance between the center and a point on the circle, so what is this? This is the radius. You know what you just found? Everything you needed to know to solve this problem. You now have the center, and you now have the radius... And you can now give me the answer, which we'll cram in this corner right here. x plus 1 squared y minus 2 squared equals 13 squared. So if you wanted to, you could have just picked that number up right there at 169 and put it in your formula. Okay, number 12. What is the equation of the circle with a center there that includes that point? Mm. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Now, I'm going to warn you, the problems that you see here are not all inclusive of the problems you're going to see on the practice sheet. So I suggest you listen closely to what I'm about to say. On the practice sheet, you're going to see a different type of problem, and it's going to give you the two endpoints of a diameter. I need you to keep in mind what you are looking for. You are looking for the center, and you're looking for the radius. If they give you the two endpoints of a diameter, you might need to come back and watch this later, but if they give you the two endpoints of the diameter, you need to find the center between those two, the midpoint between those two. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just pause what I'm doing right here. I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper, and I just want to ramble about something really quickly. Because, honestly, I just realized that the problem that's on here is um, not consistent with some of the practice problems. So I'm just going to be fair with you for a second. If I can find some scrap paper. Oh, my word, I don't know where I keep scrap paper here in my house. Here we go. Found some scrap paper. On the uh, practice problems that, that correspond with this lesson and on the quiz, you're going to have a problem that gives you the endpoints of a diameter. And we did a problem like this on the front side, but the numbers were pretty, and it was small, and you could graph it, and you could get a visual. But in this case, you can't. And um, the one on, one's on the practice sheet. So let me just kind of give it to you graphically. I'm going to give you the endpoints of a diameter, and you need to find the center. And you're going to find that center. How? By finding the midpoint. So you're going to have to use the midpoint formula. Don't ask me what it is. Please don't ask me what it is. I will be glad to help you if you need me to, but I want you to think your way through it, okay? The midpoint is going to be the average. 
Oh gosh, I just gave you the formula. <laughs> the average between these two coordinates. Average your x's and average your y's. And then you'll need to find the distance between the center and one of those points. Or you could find the distance between those two endpoints, and that would be your diameter. You could take half and get your radius, okay? I'm just giving you hints for when you get to the practice problems. Here goes. Number 12, very quickly, and then we'll call it a lesson. Equation of a circle with a center. Now you know the center. Good for you. Pow, right there. It includes a point. Wonderful. But we don't know the radius. We're going to do the exact same thing we just did. D equals square root of parentheses, parentheses again for fun, 4 minus negative 4 squared plus 9 minus negative 6 squared. I don't remember if this one turns out pretty or not. That's going to be 8, and that's going to be 15 squared, so we have uh, 64 plus 225, 8 and 15. Yeah, this one's going to turn out nice. This one's a Pythagorean triple. Yeah, this is going to work. Um, and we end up with a number off the top of my head. It's not coming to me. 289. There we go. Square root of 289 is 17. We just found the radius. The radius is 17. If I'm going too fast, pause it. Try it on your own. Please, please, please. X plus 4. Y plus 6. 17 squared is 289. There we go.